then the populations can put back. We're seeing the consequences of not understanding that there are limits to what we can extract. Whether through a hundred kilometer long fishing lines or bottom trawlers dragging heavily weighted nets across the seafloor, the damage to the environment is undeniable. Some 300,000 whales, dolphins, and porpoises died unnecessarily last year as unintended casualties of fishing nets. The damage from the trawlers is even worse. Imagine catching squirrels with a bulldozer. That's what we're doing to the ocean, not in just a few places. Wherever trawling takes place, it is so intolerably destructive. Each year, humans take about 90 million tons of fish out of the world's oceans. And this year, the United Nations predicted there would be a 40 million ton shortfall in global fish stocks by 2030, unless action is taken to slow overfishing and replenish stocks. We aren't at the tipping point yet, but we can take actions now before things do get out of control. The next little piece of time is the best chance we'll ever have to get it right. There are countries that are making great strides towards this end, which brings us to the next set of rankings in the Environmental Performance Index. Last year, Finland, South Africa, and Sweden all set or enforced limits to keep fishing off their waters sustainable, with Australia among the leaders. Australia and New Zealand, they're big fishing countries by tradition, and they recognized a decade ago that if there are no fish, there's no fishermen, and there's no economy around fishing. They have reversed the trend. They have begun to see fish stocks rising. At the other end of the scale, the EPI team found that Singapore, Belgium, and Germany have not been setting or enforcing fishing restrictions, with the Netherlands hitting rock bottom. The irony here is that some of the countries that are the worst actors in this regard, Spain and several others in the European Union, are shocking. Now, these are countries that should know better. And the fact that Spain continues to overfish and that the European Union does so little to discipline this bad behavior is an embarrassment. The situation is nothing short of critical for our ocean's ecosystems. And scientists face enormous challenges getting people and policymakers to care about a world they can't see. But as we emerge from the oceans, we find the problems don't stop at the water's edge. Of all the 149 million square kilometers of land on Earth, less than 7% of it's protected. And much of that includes uninhabited ecosystems that aren't exactly biodiversity hotspots. To call attention to this threat, National Geographic explorer and residence Michael Fay has traversed thousands of miles across our planet's diverse lands. In 2000, he walked 3,200 kilometers through the heart of Africa to explore and document the largest unspoiled areas of the continent. Thanks in part to Fay's efforts, the nation of Gabon established its first system of national parks. Now, he's hoping he can inspire similar changes in his home state of California, where more than 95% of the original redwood forest has been cut down. The redwoods are the most gorgeous, beautiful, gigantic, amazing living creature on the planet, you know, and everybody wants to see one, and everybody wants to touch one, you know, and, and when you talk to a lot of people, they can't, they literally can't believe that you're allowed to cut a redwood tree, and yet, um, in the northern part of this state, cutting down a redwood tree is just a matter of course. From the southernmost redwood tree known to exist today to the northernmost, the 1,600-kilometer journey will allow Fay and his colleague Lindsay Holm to collect data on the ecology, history, and current state of the redwood forest, calling attention to the forest's majesty and fragility along the way. Lindsay records all of the 
plant species as we travel, and she very much more specifically writes diameters of redwood trees and records their status as kind of old growth or secondary growth. Then I record also birds and any sign of large mammals that we see, including actual human beings. Step by step, we record all that information, and, and when we're done, um, we'll probably have a better global view of what's going on in the redwood forest than any other two people on Earth. Some of the very trees Faye is studying have stood for more than 2,000 years, ranking them among the oldest living things on the planet, rising more than 100 meters into the sky. They are also the tallest and among the most endangered. We've gone from 100% old growth uh, redwoods to 3%. And that's about the rate that every single forest is going on Earth. The causes may be somewhat different from forest to forest. But last year, deforestation continued to be a huge problem across our planet. In Borneo, some 26,000 square kilometers of rainforests have been cut down and replanted with oil palm trees, mostly for production of biodiesel fuel. In Brazil, more than 20,000 square kilometers of rainforest on average each year have given way to soybean and cattle farming. And in the Democratic Republic of Congo, poor farmers slash and burn about 9,000 square kilometers of forest each year mostly for heating and cooking fuel. Worldwide, nearly 50% of the original forests are gone. And with the help of NASA satellite photos taken over the last five years, we can see there are few signs of slowing. Today, an area the size of a soccer field is cut down every other second. So you lose those forests. You, you have a lot more erosion. You have um, a lot more degradation on water systems. It's a huge problem, and it exists in every single country on Earth, developed or not developed. Adding fuel to the fire, the cutting and burning of all those trees emits hundreds of millions of tons of carbon into the atmosphere every year accounting for 25% of the world's CO2 emissions. And since trees absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, what we lose in forests, we gain in additional carbon. There are some parts of the world where land is being cleared at an enormously rapid rate. This is an essential issue for us to track, a critical element of environmental success, and frankly, a critical element of whether the planet is going to get onto a sustainable trajectory. To that end, the Environmental Performance Index tells us where trees are falling unsustainably. With Uganda, Pakistan, Nigeria, and Indonesia being among the worst offenders. To see the degree of deforestation that's continuing in Southeast Asia, uh, Indonesia in particular, is really deteriorating rapidly. On the flip side, Germany, Cuba, Ukraine, Spain, and Italy have all grown or maintained their forests at sustainable levels. So in terms of specific performance, uh, country by country, uh, there's good news to report to some degree. Uh, some of the bad actors of the past, Brazil, for example, have done a lot to clean up their act. Deforestation in Brazil dropped 30% from the previous year, the lowest rate on record. That's welcome news in a region where the fires used to clear these forests are the number one source of air pollution. As for California's redwoods, we had no idea that we're going to find trees, many, 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 many trees over 10 feet in diameter. And, and I think that's why we're in the redwoods. We, we want to use the redwoods to say, 